Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and innovators who are transforming health. I'm your host, Logan Plaster. It's my pleasure to be here today with L.R. Fox, head of Next Life Sciences. Fox, great to see you. Thanks so much for having me. We're going to dive right into it because you've got a unique pro product and project. Uh, you're working on male birth control. I love the name, Plan A. Uh, so let's just get right into it. What, what are you designing? What are you, what are you working on? Yeah, so when we look at the uh, contraception as a whole, right now, uh, the fact is it's failing. It's failing everyone. Half all pregnancies are still unplanned. Like, we live in this modern world and... Half? Yeah, and half. Wow. And that's even in the United States. Okay. Right? And so when you look at what is, what is it that really people need, uh, what we see is that people say the holy grail of contraception is something that's long-acting, reversible contraception, LARCs. Right? And uh, sadly, no one is developing a lark outside of what we've been developing. And uh, that's what's so exciting about this is it's long acting, it's reversible, it's a quick 10 minute doctor's visit that gives you 10 years of thought free protection. Why has there been such a hesitancy to develop, to, to spend the time and the funds to develop this kind of male contraception? And I think when you look at contraception overall, it's incredibly under invested in and underfunded. Okay sex in general people don't like to talk about or to touch and yet it permeates through every aspect of our life it is known as the social dial the one thing that we know we can reliably if we tune it down and prevent unplanned pre pregnancies allow people to make intentional choices when they bring children into yeah. their their lives it sets up that family for success financially, mm. as well as it reduces crime rates in communities. It enables access, women's access to the workplace as just the, the trickle effects throughout all of society is so huge, and yet people are scared to touch it. Interesting, interesting. Um, how did you get into this? Uh, how did you get a passion for this? Because I know you have, you've had an interesting journey. You were involved in drones. Yeah. You've been involved in innovation more generally. So yeah. how did you get into this? For me, my, my passion has always been not just how do we make incremental improvements, but how do we create whole new categories, mm -hmm. right? How do we create the future that needs to exist? And uh, for me, that was, uh, I was uh, previously, as you mentioned, uh, started my last company. Uh, it was in the drone and aviation space. Uh, that when I started, the industry didn't even exist, didn't even yeah. have a name. And so because of that, I was brought into the US Chamber of Commerce as a vice chair to help companies navigate those complex regulatory environments and help advocate for businesses that are making that global yeah. impact. In that, I was in a uh, uh, this meeting at the White House where we're talking about, you know, how do we, what's those next advances forward from flying cars and drones and AI, yeah. and it just hit me like a brick in the face. Like, we talk about all these amazing things, and yet we're missing the fact that half all pregnancies are unplanned. A coin flip odd of being wow. able to make the most important decision of your life is denied to the majority of people. Yeah. And so I started to look into that, and I think half all pregnancies are unplanned because we've ignored half of the entire population. Interesting. Men. Interesting. Zero options. Men have absolutely no options for birth control. They have permanent sterilization, vasectomy. Okay, that's great when your child's complete, right? And that's great. I'm glad it exists. And then condoms. And condoms are truly not, like, they have a 57% dissatisfaction rate. You tell me any other product out there that has that high of dissatisfaction, and we say, oh, well, that's going to be the solution. It's not, yeah, yeah. right? It's good at preventing STDs, and people should use it for that, but it also has a 16 to 18% failure rate at preventing pregnancies. We need a male birth control that's long-acting and reversible, and that's why I stepped up to the plate and uh, brought together an amazing team. Let's talk about the technology itself. Yeah. Where do we stand in terms of the Plan A product? Uh, I know this is something that has been tested elsewhere. This is not like brand new, yeah. but you're bringing a new version of it to the market. So where are we at? This technology uh, that Plan A is based on, known as basal gel, so a proprietary hydrogel, it's been in development for decades. That's right. right. And it started out in India back in the late 70s. Mm. We've seen numerous, over a dozen preclinical and even clinical testing done in India. It was brought to the United States about 10 years ago by the Parsimus Foundation, which has invested heavily and their goal was to de-risk it, show that this is safe and effective. They spent 10 years doing preclinical testing and then partnered with us, Next Life Sciences, who are, uh, we're exclusively taking this and commercializing it to bring it to the world, not just in the United States, but throughout Europe, as well as other countries that are literally messaging us. About once a week, we get a new country that says from their health ministry, hey, what can we do to help 
how can we make this happen? Wow. How much of this is a technical challenge and how much of this is macro, societal, cultural challenge? Yeah, the, we have seen so much excitement. Like people are, uh, I think people have been hesitant for a long time about male birth control because they, it just seems so far off. Mm. But now that they see it, like here, I'll show it to you. Like when they see it in person, they're like, wow, this is real. Like this is something that I can be excited about. You've got a vial. And so we got it right here. Okay. Okay. That's Vasogel. Yes. So this is the, uh, yes, exactly. The Vasogel. Vasogel. That's the key component in plan A. And so I'll pull it out here. And so here, you can actually hold it. Nice. Right. And so you see this vial. This is good for 50 injections. Okay. Right. So incredible, a uh, tiny bit is needed. And it goes in, you flip it upside down, see it's a nice uh, liquid state. Yeah. Right. And so what happens is it gets injected into the vas deferens. I have a little synthetic vat, don't worry, it's synthetic, vas deferens here. And we'll put this here. And so this vas deferens, uh, this is a little tube that carries sperm. When you get a vasectomy, this gets snipped. But what we do is a quick, simple injection, a little bit of the hydrogel into here and it forms a flexible filter. You can actually see it in there. Okay. And you can see it's nice and flexible. Yeah, maybe we'll show right? your video on uh, the, as B-roll. Yeah, there. sure. And so what, what it does is that allows, uh, it creates a little microscopic filter, perfectly sized to allow all fluids to pass through except sperm. Okay. Sperm, Okay. right? <laughs> and and this, this works now? We have, we have seen incredible success okay. in all of the preclinical and clinical testing. We are going through the FDA to get formal approval to do clinical testing in the United States, okay. which we're planning to launch right at the start of the year, 2024. Wow, okay. So and then, yeah. and then what will that sort of journey look like after? We plan to be in market by 2026. By 2026, okay, yeah. okay. Now you're, you're saying you're getting a strong, uh, positive reaction from folks, and yet I know this is still gonna be sort of a marketing challenge, still gonna be like a cultural shift. How are you thinking about the way that you talk to men. Yeah, for men, to me, it's uh, so long people have talked about male birth control as uh, shifting the burden. Mm -hmm. And to anybody else who's, anybody out there who said that, I'm sorry for calling you out, but I think that's so stupid. Okay. Okay, because it's not about shifting the burden, saying, hey, it sucks for, birth control sucks for women now. Yeah. Men have to pay their price. Just suck too. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> men are, sign me up, right? No, it's about alleviating the burden. Seeing the couple as a unit, mm. right? The man and the woman that together need to consent to having a child. It should be mutual consent. So both of them should have birth control options, or if they're in a long-term committed relationship, they should be able to then decide as a couple what birth control best fits our lifestyle, whether it's both of us or one of us using it. And it should be about alleviating the burden of birth control from everyone. Interesting. This is sort of a sidestep question, but as somebody, I get the sense that you get a, you're passionate about disrupting whole industries. Yeah. You worked in aviation, now you're working in contraception. Is it a challenge for you to not bump into something here and say, well, let's, let's disrupt that too, <laughs> you know, to stay focused? Is that a challenge? Absolutely. To me, it's about, uh, I measure my life and everything I do by how can I maximize my sustainable impact? Okay. Every decision I make, from the smallest to the biggest. And so I say, well, what is that biggest impact? And I know with full confidence that for right now, the biggest thing and where our team has our focus and we've been pouring millions of dollars in and bringing investors along for the journey who are doubling down right now as we go into our next round because what we're doing has such a mon monumentous impact globally. Yeah. And what's really exciting about it is, is I can go into a discussion with an ultra high net worth individual who says, hey, how can I get plan A in my uh, luxury, you know, loft up in, you know, my skyscraper in New York, and then go and talk to impoverished communities in third world countries that are saying, we also desperately need this. It's and it's just amazing to see a product that can span and have so much excitement from all, everybody that sees it as a way to bring them to the life that they want to live with intention. Yeah. If you could send an, any message to someone watching this video in terms of a future partnership, what would that be? To me, the, the biggest thing is just, there is so, so, many, uh, so many opportunities for men to have the discussion uh, mm, with other men. Yeah. And to talk about like, hey, like, if this becomes an option, like, you know, 
let's do it, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, we see that with vasectomies. So just talking about it. Just talking about Having it. Having conversations. The, the number one way for a man to get a vasectomy, most people think is their wife beating him over the head. That's actually not true. The number one way for a man to get a vasectomy is, can you guess? Talking to another guy. Yeah. Yep. When one man gets a vasectomy, his five closest friends are significantly more likely to get a vasectomy. Interesting. Okay. And while we're not a vasectomy, we're not a vasectomy 2.0, right? Vasectomy is for men who are child complete, 45 to 65 years old typically, yeah. right? Um, but our focus is for men who are 18 to 25 to 35 to 45 who are saying, hey, I don't want a child right now, but I might want one in the future. That accounts for 80% of the entire male population in the world. That's billions of people. Wow. They're desperately seeking a solution to be able to participate in family planning. It's exciting. So when did you like to say you'd like to be in market? 2020? 2026. 2026. Well, Fox, I wish you the best. It's exciting to hear this update. Uh, the market needs it. People like me need it. Um, and you're going to do a lot of good. So, Fox, thanks for taking time with me. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Really appreciate it.